What's up guys, we're back with more nutrition talk. So today we're gonna to talk specifically about alcohol. Now, we've spoken about alcohol in the past, but we're gonna divide this into three groups and talk about one of them in particular. So in one group, there's folks who drink one drink every three months. There's not really an issue there of, of, of mixing exercise and alcohol. You know, it's a tiny little blip on the radar. It doesn't really do anything. On the other side, we're talking, you know, you have the group of people who consume large amounts of alcohol who have no interest in fitness goals whatsoever. You know, eat, drink, be merry. Do you? No judgment. Like, that, that's fine. In the middle, you have people who have alcohol interwoven into their life and have either some noticeable fitness goal or aggressive fitness goals to which alcohol presents an impediment. Mm -hmm. So that's who we're talking about. The more specific context would be the folks using the sort of con conversations that you have with the people that you work with one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. to, to, to dial in. So what, you know, what's, what's a common thing? Uh, well, so I don't know if people know the details of like how I work with people. I mean, it, it, it changes for each individual, but mm -hmm. um, by and large, most people go through a point where they're just getting more calories and expanding and getting fuel for their fire for mm -hmm. the gym. Um, uh, during that time, generally, you're eating an amount of food that's in excess of what you need just to sustain life mm -hmm. because we're looking to build muscle and we're looking to get you going. Yeah. Here. Um, in that, during that time frame, again, alcohol is a poison, is a toxin. Sure. Whether you do it sparingly, every single time you do it, you're doing something that's not necessarily great for your body. Right. But, again, we're, as we're living a normal life, in that, in, during that time frame, um, if you're drinking socially, the impact that it's gonna have on your caloric intake mm -hmm. is not, um, it's not necessarily damaging to the goal that we are achieving over that time. Sure. But, at the end of that, we go to a point where people are now cutting because mm -hmm. all that muscle that we've built, we're looking to you know, get rid of that excess glycogen stores that we've put on and yep. now we wanna show off that beautiful muscle that we built. Yep. Um, at that point, we've lowered calories mm -hmm. enough where two things. One, the caloric impact of alcohol mm -hmm. and the empty calories that it brings is going to be detrimental by and large almost every single time you do it. Yep. And two, the impact of alcohol on your body's ability to cut yeah. fat and um, metabolize the nutrients in your food sure. is it's just not, for that time frame, for that small window of a cut of like yeah. a month or two that you're doing, it, it serves no purpose. So I, I wanna reframe this in a very polarizing way because this is, we're talking about a very interconnected and difficult topic and I want to try and slice through the middle. So basically what you're saying is, if you are trying to lose body fat, alcohol presents an obstacle unequivocally at all points of it. Correct. Yes. Okay, cool. So no beating around the bush. Mm -hmm. If you are trying to lose body fat and consume alcohol at the same time, you will not succeed. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now we can get a little more specific. So what, it, uh, so you mentioned kind of when we were just cooking up this idea of someone going on a four week cut and drinking minimally, your guidance is to drink minimally. Mm -hmm. So how minimal is minimal? Uh, have your Friday night or Saturday night dinner with your family mm -hmm. or your little outing that you do with your friends yeah. and have a glass of wine or Two, one, one glass one of wine. Of wine. Yeah. Uh, maybe two beers. Sure. Um, Once I, a week? Pretty much. Okay. So we're talking when, so again, to contextualize, if you want to lose body fat and you're drinking alcohol, the guideline that will allow you success is one drink per week. So what, what we're left with is if you, if you drink, it, it, let's just say, on Friday and Saturday night, you have a pretty active social life and you go out and you drink two or three drinks. It's not that, it's not that much. If you have no fitness goals tying you down. So the, the context of this is you mentioned four weeks for a cut and then expansion and stuff. So kind of take me through that. Like, what does that look like? Uh, uh, right now, the way I'm working with people is they'll get uh, four weeks of a cut yep. where their calories are brought down either to their baseline mm -hmm. from the expansion that we went through. Okay. But given the person, it may go underneath the baseline. 
Okay. Um, for about four weeks. Uh, we then go through a two week refeed mm -hmm. where we basically um, sort of counteract the body's adaptive thermogenesis yep. and its ability to like say, oh, you're taking me down, I'm gonna slow down metabolism. So sure. we refeed it, we get spark up that metabolism again, and then we bring the cut back in again for about another four weeks, either from the place where we were at the end of the first four weeks, right. or we go even deeper, pending okay. their goals, pending where they're at, you know, uh, again, all highly individualized. Sure. Um, but the main, uh, I, you know, I give people various uh, markers and various tips and tricks on how to maintain through a cut and how to like live your life, yeah. but still reach the end goal that we're looking for. And one of the biggest ones is alcohol is a part of our lives. We all hang out during this time because of the impact that alcohol has on your body. I would remove it if you want the cut to have its full impact that you are looking for. Right, and and so, okay, so four weeks, two weeks, four weeks, so 10 weeks, right? That's what we're talking about. Yes, if you, and I guess ideally you would include the refeed in there with the minimal alcohol, even if you're okay. adding gotcha. calories again, yes. So uh, so as not to sort of uh, add the, the, the negative consequences of what alcohol does on top of what exactly. you're trying to, okay, I got you. Um, okay, so two months, right? And so, you know, the, the context that we kind of have to have here is, if there's a thing worth pursuing, well, then you kind of have to part the seas, so to speak, to create a direct line to that. So if you have a goal and it only takes two months, the, and the simplest way is to just remove X from it, we, we, we would be doing you a disservice as fitness professionals to give you too many weasel words and too many outs to get around that. Mm -hmm. So here's the thing, again, camp one. You drink one out, one glass of whatever it is once a month. The the, the effects of which are a tiny little blip. Mm -hmm. You have no fitness goals and you like to consume a lot of alcohol. Mazel tov. In the middle, we have the people that are that truly are the ones that struggle with what we're talking about because they want to have their cake and eat it too. And I mean, the the especially during the cut, what. I have seen that occurs, um, not necessarily just with my clients, but in general, if you, you know, if you study nutrition or if you know the populace and what's going down, what you see is that when calories come down, people will decrease food intake mm -hmm. and substitute it with the alcohol and say, well, mm -hmm. I'm hitting my numbers, the numbers are the numbers, yeah. uh, and I just substituted it. And what I want to get clear to everyone is it's not necessarily the intake of the alcohol. Sure. It's when you want to lose weight, there are multitude of factors that have to be on point and in balance for that to be as successful as you want it. Sleep, mm -hmm. your ability to train, yep. your body's metabolism, the nutrients that you're getting. Those are four out of, I'm not gonna go too much sure, deeper. Right, yeah. Alcohol impacts all four of those yep. for a significant amount of time after you drink. So if I drink on a Friday, mm -hmm. on Sunday, my metabolism and my hormones are still a bit off because the alcohol impacted my sleep. Mm -hmm. I didn't metabolize the food that I was supposed to get in to help me train more so that I could burn more calories and mm -hmm. then thus lose fat. Yep. Um, the body actually physically reacts to the alcohol in a way where it tells the body's system to not release fat. Yeah. It literally says, don't do exactly what this person's trying to do right now. Right. So. In that regard, it's not necessarily the equivalent of what you're drinking into the numbers that you're trying to put into yourself. It's, right. holy crap, this, it's a time bomb. Right. And, and I, I guess the impetus for making this video and speaking in such blunt terms is you have you know, the sort of uh, uh, immovable object problem, right? So you come up against the, the friction of, all right, I, have, I want to consume alcohol and I want to have a six pack. And so what you need to think of the next time you consume alcohol if you want a goal of that nature is eric and dan said that i can't have both if i drink i am telling the world i'm telling myself i'm telling my body or whatever it is i've just given up on that goal and so why does it have to be that black and white well i i have no experience working with people that consume a lot of alcohol and have good fitness outcomes zero been doing this quite a while now mm -hmm. zero people so if you propose to be the outlier, there's a chance, I suppose. But you gotta kinda you know, figure out, okay, what, what are you made of here? Are you needing 
to reevaluate your goal, maybe the power of the social thing and the consumption thing and the whatever thing is just more powerful than the goal. Okay, then we need to reevaluate the goal. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with going, hold on, I misappropriated how I want to proportion and prioritize the things in my life. That would be okay. But to be unequivocally clear, you cannot do both. Yep. Cool. It's just that black and white. I don't know if it can get more clear than that. Nope. I hope we've painted an image in your head. Next time you drink something, you're going to see our stupid faces telling you that you can't have fun, I guess. Um, but, but you'll yes. love us for it. But you'll love us for it. Because our job is to give you the thing that you want, not to ensure that the second glass of wine is fun. Fun. I don't know. Something like that. Thanks for watching, guys. Do you have any follow-up to that? No. Final no. thoughts? Okay. Thanks for watching, guys. I uh, hope to come out with more nutrition stuff on a regular basis. Let us know if you want to cover specific topics. Yeah. Post we'll some questions. You. Yeah, we'll see you next time. All right. Thank you.